Hello, guys. Welcome to Afoam TV. My name is Afoam Hine. It's another beautiful episode here on this channel. And today, I'm going to give you an update that a lot of people have been asking for. I'm sure you remember when we started this project, we came to Japan. Japan in the eastern region of Ghana. It's very close to home. And then what we did here was to uh, set up an integrated farm. Now this integrated farm had goats, sheep, we have cattle, we have some horses, we have donkeys, we have geese, we have pigs, we have some ducks. Uh, the list, the, the, we have some grass cutter. And the last time I was here, we were going to start a catfish farm. I'm going to show you an update in a minute how far we have gone with the catfish farm and so i'm excited to share this update with you and let you know what we are doing as far as this farm is concerned now as you can see we've already partitioned the land now we have created pastures so we have pasture one pasture one you see the donkeys and some sheep eating in pasture one now we have pasture two, which is right behind me, and then pasture three. We also have allocated some land for crop farming, vegetable farming. Now what we are going to do is that we are going to use water from the catfish farm to um, irrigate the crop farming or the crop, the vegetables that we are going to grow. And I'm going to show you um, how we have set that up in the... Um, how we have set that up and guys this is an exciting project because you see normally people talk about using catfish water to you know irrigate your farms and all of that but you never really see it happen but on this farm even before we introduce our fingerlings the water that was used to treat the ponds are not even going waste we are using that water to you know irrigate the crop land that we have allocated right away for the crops that we are going to grow so on this farm we are going to have the um, concrete ponds and oh, wow. these are two 5,000 capacity concrete ponds making 10,000 and then we are also going to set up um tarpaulin ponds we are right now we are setting up 3,000 capacity tarpaulin ponds to add to these concrete ponds and as you can see the ponds have been treated already and we are just you know um, disposing of the water from the pond one of the questions that i normally get is that after you have cured or treated the pond with the um, water do you um, flush out that water before introducing the fingerlings yes please you have to flush out that water and clean the pond with salt water so you clean the pond with salt water and you leave it to dry for maybe a day before you put in water and make it ready for the fingerling so also that is also very important information that you need to get so you have to flush that water and clean the pond with salt water if you don't clean it with salt water even if you were able to clean it thoroughly i think that would be good but you have to flush out that water and put and clean it leave it to dry before you put in fresh water uh, for the fingerling so this is the concrete pond now here we are setting up the tarpaulin ponds and you see that i first of all every side that we go we try to as much as possible teach the farm attendants how to you know construct these things on their own so first i did one of them i constructed one i did the measurements and the cutting and how we are going to put the metals uh, and set it up for them now i asked them to do the rest of it and i think they did a good job they are fast learners so they are on their own they are also going to set up the remaining two of the cat fish uh, tarpaulin ponds so that is how far work is on this farm on this farm we are um, finishing the catfish farm um, today now on this farm we are going to take the opportunity to also hatch fingerlings on the farm so we have our tanks here 
that we are going to use to hatch the fingerlings so we are treating them um, for now and this is where we are going to set up the hatchery it's not going to be a very big hatchery we are just going to set up a small hatchery it's not going to be for sale it's basically to be able to feed this farm with the uh, number of fingerlings that we need so we are setting getting ready you know to set up our hatchery here and then um, that's where we are going to hatch our fingerlings also you can see here that we have rabbits rabbit i told you this is a very proper integrated farm so we have a lot of um, different animals here we have rabbits here uh, they are doing well mm -hmm. so they are doing well and also we have grass cutter here so we can see grass cutter also doing very well in their cages and we have quite a number here we have quite a number here so this this farm is really on course and seriously doing the job as it should so we have our grass cutter here and all the cages we have rabbits grass cutter rabbit grass cutter and all the cages are filled all the cages are filled yeah yeah this is a this is a male grass cutter looking at the head this is a male yeah so um some beds pets beds too this is what we call in our this is uh, a bubru in our local dialect yes and uh, some pet beds too um so this farmer um is really i mean doing a lot doing a lot and that's what we expect from the Ghanaian youth involved in farming and doing everything possible to succeed in the business. At the end of the day this is where the wastewater from the ponds the fish ponds are going to end up they are going to be used to irrigate um, this cropland 
as I told you, we have demarcated um, demarcated the land for animal and for crops. So on this land, which has just been ploughed, we are going to grow tomatoes here on this about a two acre land that we have demarcated for crop and vegetable farming. There's another um, almost two acres also demarcated uh, right behind me and I'll show you in a minute. We have already started growing onions on there and, and the tomatoes uh, have been nursed already. I want to show you where we've nursed the tomatoes. And this is a very hard working um, attendant working on the irrigation system here, making sure that the water that comes from the um, ponds do not go waste. So when we talk about a proper integrated farm, um, this is what we mean. We are not letting anything go waste. So um, the wastewater from the catfish is also going to be used to irrigate the farm for the crops. And for your information, that water is one of the most... Um, um, wastewater from catfish is very fertile, fertilized because of the waste and contains a, a lot of good nutrients that can be used by the crops. So this is our nursery um, that we have done for the tomatoes. The tomato nursery that we have done and that is going to be used to transplant it on the land that we are watering right behind me. You can see a little bit far ahead to onions that have been grown and those are the onions that have been grown there. i walk there in a minute for you to see. So um, when we talk about making effective and efficient use of land, I mean, um, this is a, an eight acre land and every bit of this land is being put to good use. Every bit of this land is being put to good use. And I'm happy to be associated with this project. And I hope um, most of you also um, get motivated. When we talk about the layout of the farm, that is what we mean. Before you start your project, you must be able to lay out the farm and know where you are going to do what. So uh, if it is crop farming, if it is animal farming, where are you going to site this particular form of uh, animal um, housing? Where are you going to do your crops? Where are you going to use as pasture? As you can see, this is the pasture that I was speaking about. So we have pasture one here, pasture two, because we are not using it. Now we've grown okra on the pasture two. This is pasture two. We have grown okra on there. And then pasture three is just after this one. You can see some sheep and goats grazing on the pasture three. And these are the two um, crop um, lands that have been de demarcated. The one we are growing onions and nursing the tomatoes on there. And this one that have just been plowed and uh, we are going to grow tomatoes here. So I'm happy to report on this farm. We started this project uh, um, quite a while ago. And when we started, I brought you the updates at Japan. And then I told you that this farm was started by my friend, um, who's also a musician, a gospel musician in Ghana. And... So, I mean, so far, he's been, he's, been, he's, he's been doing great. He's been doing great so far. And I'm happy with the progress that I've seen so far. Okay. Okay.
Go to the first. The first time I was with you, I'm here. They told me I was with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 